Well, good morning, Connection Church. I'm going to invite you to stand to your feet. We're going to begin our time together by praising the Lord for what he's done. Amen? All right, let's do it. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin. Lost without home with no place to begin. Your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested in my life began. Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. And my orphan heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet and my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested in my life began. Oh, your grace so free watches over me. You have made me new now life begins with you. It's your I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested in my life began. Yeah. Oh, your grace so free. Darkness rejoices, though heaven had lost. Let's sing it out together, church. But then Jesus arose with the freedom in hand. Death was arrested in my life again. Oh, your grace, so Watches over me. It's so endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new now. Life begins with you. Praise the Lord this morning. What's going? What's going on, everybody? My name is AJ, and I have a pleasure of serving as the student pastor here at Connection Church. And here at Connection, 
we care about connecting you to a growing relationship with Jesus. And we got just a few announcements today. And um, one of them on Wednesday night, this coming up Wednesday, we have what's our going to be our student launch night. For the past couple months, we've been doing our summer hangouts, and we actually look forward to the worshiping with our kids again. We look forward to actually singing worship music and everything and pouring into our kids again. And uh, we got an ongoing bet with our kids who can invite the most students. We'll get a gift at the end of launch night. So Gage and Jermaine, y'all better be on your A game because I'm bringing everybody I can bring with me, baby. And secondly, we want to talk about offering. Here at Connection Church, we don't give because we need to. We give because we get to because he first gave all. And we have a few ways to give at Connection Church. You have our, our connectors walking around with a bucket. And also, if you're on for our online family, you'll be able to give online through ConnectionDublin.com or by texting GIVE to 84321. If you could, bow your, heads and, bow your heads for prayer, please. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we come to you right now to say thank you. God, we just thank you for life, health, and strength, God. We thank you for everybody that's here in this room, Father God. God, we pray that you just surround us with a hedge of, protect, a hedge of protection right now, Father God. God, we know how, what's going on in the world right, right now, God, but we know what your gospel is, there's unity, God. Your gospel is what's going to heal this country, Father God, and we pray that right now. God, we plead that Psalm 91 takes over our members in here today that you will protect us in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic. And God, we pray that your Holy Spirit would just rest on this place today, Father God. So no matter what, these people might have walked in here with today, God, that you would just condition our heart to be able to hear and receive a word from you father god god we know there's broken hearts in here father god we know there's struggles that people are struggling with god but i know what it is when i know you are able god i know you're stronger than anything this world can throw at us father god and i, I pray that right now for our people god god we pray over buck as he comes up on the stage god you just your holy spirit would just speak through him father god that he would just willingly submit himself to you as a vessel and allow you to work in and through him father god God, we thank you for this service, God, and we just love you, and we praise you, give you all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. that AJ talked about Psalm 91 in there. We've been praying a lot about that in my own personal time with the Lord. And I just think it's such a great reminder for the season that we're in. So kind of keeping that in mind, we wanted to introduce a new song to you guys. We hope that you'll um, sing it and make this the anthem of your heart. It's a declaration and a prayer. So let's sing it together.
we're just so happy that we don't have to fight our battles. But God, you're already going before us and fighting them for us. And if we would only look up, we would see your goodness. If we would only look up, we would see that victory coming. And God, I just ask that in this next few moments, as Pastor Buck comes to bring your word, that you would be so exalted high enough that we would see you for who you are and we would just draw closer to you. We pray all this in your strong and holy name, Jesus. Amen. Be seated. Amen. That's good stuff, right? Yeah? How good is it we don't fight alone? <laughs> uh, but we fight our battles through worship and prayer with the Lord. Amen? Uh, it's good to see you guys. If it's your first time here, I uh, just want to say a special welcome. Uh, my name's Buck, and uh, here at Connection Church, we, we simply exist to connect people to a growing relationship with Jesus. And so I pray you felt welcome from the minute uh, you came into the door. And uh, one of the things that we love to do at our church is celebrate. We exist. We believe that when the gospel is preached, that it's the power of God unto salvation. Uh, we had a young man give his life to Jesus last weekend. Y'all come on, let's praise God for that. That's good stuff. In the midst of, of all this going on, man, good news is just good. Um, also, I, I want to tell you, we've got folks signing up next weekend. Uh, again, we're celebrating baptisms, right? That's going to be awesome. So make sure you're here. And uh, if you feel like, man, uh, I've been coming, Buck, and, and as you preach, I, I, I feel like, man, maybe the Lord's uh, drawing me to go public with my faith. Man, I would encourage you to sign up at the Next Steps table, and uh, we'll talk to you about what that means, and we'll get you signed up. Also, uh, we have a crew coming through Heart and Soul next Sunday night, 5 o'clock. And what Heart and Soul serves as uh, is our membership class. But honestly, uh, it does so much more than that, that we want to equip you with the essentials you need to flourish in your relationship with Jesus. And so if you feel like, man, that's something uh, I feel like is my next step, again, we would encourage you uh, to go sign up with us at the Next Steps table. And one of the things we say all the time here at our church is that growing people take next steps. Um, and so maybe begin to seek the Lord and see what that step is um, for you. Uh, but today, uh, I've got a quick message just for our community. If you would, just turn with me to Psalm 112. Um, I, I promise we're going to get back into our As You Go series. But I just have a word for uh, you. Um, also, church family, I want to acknowledge you online that couldn't be here. Man, we love you. Uh, pray you're tuning in with us. Um, but, but this week, um, start school. Right? Many of uh, public schools have started, and, and we know Trinity has started, and we've heard great things that God continues to protect there. Um, you know, many football teams started this, this past weekend. And so I've just got a word for us today as we're in the middle of uh, this pandemic and, and this political year. All these things are going on. I, I want to give a great promise. Right? And one of the things that I'm going to talk about today uh, is the importance of reading God's Word and disciplining yourself to do that every day. Let me tell you why that's awesome. Because every now and again, you get hit with a nugget that speaks into your soul. Amen? I want you to read this. Psalm 112. We're going to start in verse 6. Um, and listen to the, the promises of this psalm. It says, this psalm. It says, Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. Verse 7, they will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their hearts are secure. They will have no fear. In the end, they will look in triumph on their foes. You see, when it says we fight our battles, we don't fight against flesh and blood, right? But we fight against the forces of, of darkness and evil and all the things that come against us. But we serve a God who is victorious. Amen? And so what this verse speaks to is three things. One, in Christ, we have everlasting security, right? That we can wake up and we can trust God with all things. We can trust God with eternity. But what I see in this passage is when we trust God, the man of God or the woman of God has everyday security. Hear that again. The man and the woman of God has everyday security. And in fact, bad news does not shake us. 
I know there's many that are paralyzed with fear and worry. And maybe you wake up and every situation you see is a worst case scenario. Your mind immediately goes to what could be. And you can't walk in freedom and faith because you are gripped and, and struggling with fear. Well, let me tell you, fear comes from our enemy, not from our Savior. And so God's word here says that we who trust in the Lord, our hearts are steadfast on him. We trust in him. Therefore, we don't, we don't wake up fearing bad news. I, I love what this, this says. It says um, bad news doesn't shake the man. It says we shall not be afraid of evil tidings or things. Our heart is fixed on trusting the Lord. Even, in the, be even the best of persons at times are overtaken by ill tidings. A loved one dies, a bank fails, a lightning strikes, fire, flood, damage, war is declared. God does not take us out of the world, nor does he exempt us from life's ordinary disasters. Now hear this. But what he does is allow us to rest our hearts on him. We may not be able to praise him for what happens, but rest assured, Christian, we can praise him in what happens. Bad news need not shake us because God is on his throne today. And so the heart that's steadfast on the Lord. So I want to encourage you, right? If you're not here, if you're here and struggling with that, be connected to our Savior who gives this peace, right? Be connected to the church, right? That so many times the church is the last place to connect as we begin to connect back with schools. I want to tell you, if you're not here and you're watching online, the presence of the Lord is resting in this place right now. I sense it. And can I get an amen on that? So even if it's not here Find your connect group. Do not disconnect from the place where we can find hope, healing, and encouragement. Amen. So that's a charge to the church, to all those going back to school, sending kids to school. Go ahead and write that one in your heart and tote it with you this week. All right? Can you guys do that for me? Yes? Good. Do that. All right. Open up your Bibles now. 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians 9. We're going to pick back up in our series. 1 Corinthians 9. We're going to pick back up in our series entitled, As You Go. And if I can put this plainly, uh, this series has been all about going and making disciples. That it was not for a select group of people, but rather the commission to go and make disciples is a mandate for believers, right? And so that this is uh, basically saying what we believe here is that saved people live sent. Now imagine, I want you to ask yourself a, a pondering question here. What if you saw the people in your life as God's assignment for you? Hear that again. What if you began to see the people in your life as God's assignment for you? And how would this world and this, this, your circles be impacted if we embrace that? Because what I've said, and I'll say it again, the church, which is the people, not the place, the church is God's plan A to reach the world, and he did not give us a backup plan. Right? And so we, we are learning in this series uh, what it looks like um, to run the race, what it looks like to go and make disciples, right? As you go, make disciples. And so what we've been studying uh, is Paul, one of the, the greatest missionaries and disciple makers really the world's ever seen. He, he wrote most of the New Testament, and we've been following kind of his mindset, okay? And so I want to read uh, verses 24 through 27. I'll take that back. Verses 24 through 25, and I want to pray and I want to dig in. So it says this, it says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Last week we talked about how to effectively run the race with God, right? That we have to learn how to rest in his salvation, how to walk in his spirit, and how to run the race that he lays out for us. Now this is where we're focusing today, verse 25. It says, Everyone who Co competes in the games, goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Let's pray over the word of God. Father, I, I love you. God, I I've just been asking all morning, Lord, Lord, without, God, without your spirit's presence, God, without your word, Lord, I I'm just a, a motivational speaker at best. God, I want nothing at all to do with that. God, I want today to just be a time where we hear from you. God, we need you in this time. God, I need you. Lord, Lord I, I just, I love everyone hearing this message so much. God, I pray that you would speak to them exactly what you need to say. 
God, that, that those that don't know you would come to know you today. Those that are struggling would find freedom today. Those that are ready to run, God, they would be equipped through your word. God, only, only you can do that. God, I can't do that. And so, God, I'm asking you to come open up our hearts and ears to receive your message. Lord, I, I'm trusting you. And God, I love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So what I want you to leave today with, if you're taking notes, I want you to leave with this idea. The race requires discipline. Hear that again. The race requires discipline. And so what Paul is essentially saying is that he has leveraged his life to reach as many people as possible for Jesus. Right? Like he will go wherever he needs to go, but his heart is on going and running. Okay? But what I want to tell you is this. You ever met anybody that's just super excitable, like they just get fired up about everything? I'll tell you a funny story. I was sharing this in pre-service, and then fingers started pointing at me, right? Um, and I was like, okay, I didn't see that coming, but, but whatever. Uh, but, you know, the thing about zeal and the passion to run, okay, is that none of us, if we've been sitting on our bum all summer eating Cheetos, are going to get up and just all of a sudden knock out a marathon, right? Y'all do know that doesn't happen, right? And if you do, man, y'all are going to pick up a lung on the side of the road. You get what I'm saying? But no, races require discipline and preparation to run them well, okay? And as you get into a marathon, you have to have discipline to pace yourself so that you may finish. And so I'll say it like this. Many times on the Boston Marathon, when they're running the race, um, there's little stations where they've got to get some water in them. Many of them pack like little bars that they've got to get something in them or literally they are going to shut down, right? And so what Paul is saying is uh, we have to go into strict training. If we're going to compete and win this race, we have to go into strict training, discipline, right? And he says this race, this is a two-part sermon, Today, we're going to talk about the race requires discipline. Next week, I'm going to talk about the crown is worth the discipline. Basically, what's at the end of the race is worth every bit we go through in the race. right? But today, I want to talk about the discipline to run the race. Because here it says competitors compete for a crown that, that does not last. But we compete for a crown that lasts forever. right? We compete for a crown that lasts forever. Forever. And so I want to share some of my personal story. This may explain a lot about me if you don't know. But um, I come from a very strong sports background. So anytime I hear these verses, I, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm in. I know that. And so my sport um, that, that I, I really focused on the most um, was wrestling. Right? And you're like, man, why, why would you pick the sport where you wear this tight? But Bella calls them leotards. It makes me cringe when she says it. I'm like, Bella, that's, that's so feminine. Don't, don't, you know, it's this macho. You're, they're singlets, Bella, they're singlets, right? Um, but no, I, I, wrestling was my sport. And so, um, so anyway, so uh, I, I just decided that I wanted to be a state champion. That was just my goal. I wanted to win a Georgia high school state championship. And so this is what the day would look like for me. Um, I had zero period weights. Uh, so before school, I'm lifting weights. Uh, if we get done in time, I'm going for a quick run. Um, at lunchtime, um, I'm taking my, my own meal because one of the things with wrestling is you have to discipline yourself with eating. So I chose instead of, hey, just eating those little circle pepperoni pizzas. Y'all remember those in school, right? I know you do. And if you're past that generation, you missed out. But, um, but, but I, I said no to the pizzas to say yes to my turkey slices and fruit. I would run bleachers during lunch all along. Right? That's not the greatest time in the world. Right? And so then um, I would go on to practice. I would practice. And then I would come home. My dad would, would make me really a lot of times grilled chicken fajitas um, and, and some vegetables, a very healthy meal. And then I would get on the internet and I would scout out wrestlers. I would scout out comp competitors, learn their moves, learn who's doing what and, and just in preparation. And so this training was strict. I'm telling you, it, it required sacrifice. There are many days when that six alarm uh, clock goes off that it's like, man, bump this, dude. You know what I mean? I, I just forget it. I, I want to I go to sleep. And yet, 
And yet, we, we, we chose. Hey, I, I'm choosing to do this. And so, um, it's a cool end of the story. I, I wound up winning a, a state championship. It was a, a great moment. But I'd sold so much to this thing. I'd, I'd, I'd poured myself into it. And it was a great moment. Don't get me wrong. Threw my headgear in the air, hugged my dad. School's there. Everybody's fired up. But I want to tell you, I stand here at 32 years old today, and I couldn't tell you where my medal's at. I couldn't tell you where it's at. And let me tell you, I am pro, I am pro athletics. And I, I think it, it teaches us so much about teamwork and hard work and prepares us for life. But what I want to say is to, temper, is to temper those things and keep the main thing the main thing is that we all have a race to run and we all will stand before God and prayerfully we're going to receive a crown that's going to last for eternity. And so I say all this to say we must have discipline, that same discipline. But how many times does this not go to spirituality, right? How many times does it go, I read the Bible when I feel like reading the Bible, or I pray when I, when I, when I feel like praying, right? That we don't know how to train ourselves to be godly, right? Because the, those awesome promises in Psalms, they're not just for me to hear and tell you, but man, they're waiting on you tomorrow morning. Man, that, that encouragement is waiting on you. And so what I want to tell you, if, if you struggle with desire, Okay, desire breeds the discipline, but on the flip side, discipline will begin to breed desire. What I'm saying is, even if you don't quite know what you're doing or you haven't gotten hungry for it yet, just start somewhere and discipline yourself to start and you'll see God take it the rest of the way. I had a buddy, we were sermon prepping this week, and he said, he said a guy came to him, he said, Pastor, he said, I just don't feel like I'm good at it. I just don't feel like I'm good at reading the Bible. I can't understand it. And he's like, so therefore I just quit. We said, buddy, I watched you play golf. You still sling them clubs every Sunday. <laughs> and what he was talking about is, is how horrible he is, but yet you choose to play every week. I heard that. Yeah, you're not good. I've seen you. But um, <laughs> kidding. I love you. <laughs> I'm not even going to say who that is. He knows I love him. But hear this, okay? Zig Ziglar said it like this, great leadership guy. Motivation is fleeting, but discipline is permanent. Hear that again. Motivation is fleeting, feelings come and go, but the discipline, the choosing to do it is permanent, right? The discipline that I will read a chapter of the Bible today, and unless the apocalypse comes, that's going to happen. That's going to multiply over time, and you're going to become like that Psalms 1 man that plants them roots by a river, Right? that plants those roots by a river. And it starts with the discipline to start, the discipline to do it, because motivation fleets, discipline is permanent. All right? So I've got three things for us today. Number one, what does that strict training look like? Hear this. We must discipline ourselves to read the Bible. Turn with me to 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 3, 5 and 7. Um, 2 Timothy 3, I'm sorry, 2 Timothy 3, 15 through 17. And so this is... Uh, Paul, the same writer, right? He wrote a lot of this book, okay? Um, he was writing to his disciple, Timothy. And so we're about to talk about um, the Bible. Like, what is the purpose of reading the Bible, all right? And so this is what it says, starting in verse 15. And he says, And how from infancy you, talking about Timothy, have known the Holy Scriptures, now listen to what they do, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting. Now, this is where I want to focus. And training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And so three things I see in there. If you're taking notes, take these down. The Bible shows us how to be saved. Okay? That there is not a, uh, some sort of illustration. It is the, the Word of God that says it's profitable to make us wise unto salvation. And I want to tell you, if, if it's me or someone else speaking and we ain't preaching this Bible, man, I would roll out, okay? That it's the Word of God that shows us everything. It's focused. Now, secondly, what does the Bible do? It trains us for righteousness, right? Like we, we cannot live a godly life apart from study of the Bible. It will not happen. And one of the things that saddens me the most is I feel like people give up and quit on flourishing in their relationship with God because they're not fighting with the right weapons. 
that they're fighting with their own will. If I need to be a better person, I need to just become better. I need to quit doing these things. I need to do more of these things. And so it's this moral charge to become a better person. And yet what lies in the hearts of every individual hearing this message right now is a sinful heart that needs to be saved but also needs to be renewed by the Word of God. Every day. We are on autopilot to sin, self, pride, and being ugly to people. Period. Yet the Bible says in Romans 12, 1 and 2, is that do not be conformed, right? That the world is going that way. Don't be conformed to this way, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And our minds are renewed when we begin to wrap them around God's Word for our life. And man, you begin to see this beautiful thing happen. And then getting into the series, the third thing, you see there it says to be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The Bible equips us for the mission. The Bible equips us for the mission. If you're, if you're one of those, you're in here today, and you're like, dude, this series is awesome. I'm ready to reach people. And by the way, I forgot to celebrate. We've got teachers having prayer meetings in classrooms, y'all. You hear me? You're one of those that you're like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm reading this mail, brother. I am ready. Right? I wanted to celebrate that. That's such a huge deal to me. But I want to tell you, it's the Bible that equips us for this mission to go. Right? Study of the Bible goes. I'll give you an example. So I'm going to give you the, the, the story of reading the Bible to me. When I got saved, I got a camo Bible. Man, I still love that thing. I wound up giving it to somebody. I, I looked back and I was like, Lord, I hope you told me to do that. I love that darn Bible. You know, um, it was camo. It was cool. It was all torn up. So I looked like I, was, I knew what I was doing. You know what I mean? I know some of y'all don't be that guy that goes and tears your Bible up. So you like you've been reading the thing. You know, uh, I had a guy come to Bible study and he's like, he, he, he confessed. He's like, man, I wanted to wear a worn out Bible. So it looked like I was a stud. You know what I mean? Um, but, but I love this Bible. But honestly, I'd been in Sunday school my whole life. Didn't know where to start. No clue. And so I got asked to lead a Bible study. And so we just began to read Romans. No real clue or why. Just sounded like a good book. Read a couple of articles about it. I said, we'd try it. And so what happened is a group of men began to read the Bible. And people began to be changed. I mean, simple. Like, like the Bible was read. It was talked about. And people began to change. Well, I finished college. I got moved over here to Dublin. Carly and I were just young spring chickens back then and didn't have any kids. And man, I just think about it. I was like, what did we even do? Um, but, but, but we decided to host a Bible study. And I, again, I, I, didn't know, I not, didn't know a lot of the Bible. I said, well, that Romans thing worked pretty good. Let's do it. Let's do it again. And so I invited dudes over. And let me tell you all, if you all want to flourish in your connect groups, if you want to start, I want to tell you what grew an awesome Bible study here. Uh, duck breast, chicken wings, and the book of Romans. You hear me? We did wild game kind of stuff each week. Men showed up. We read the Bible. The small group grew. And literally, it was literally what I would do was read the Bible. I would read a commentary because I didn't know what the heck was going on. But man, people began to grow. And the Bible study began to grow. You want to know why that is? Because the Word literally did all the work. Hear that again. The Word of God literally did all the work. You know, I look back on those days and I say, man, I pray I never get to a place where I feel like I could handle this thing on my own. Because there is no clever example. There's, there's no, nothing I could say to change lives, but it is the Word of God eternal that speaks to the hearts of God's people. The Word continues to do the work. Now, this is the awesome part for you, okay? As you begin to read it, it's going to work in you, but also it's going to work through you. That same invitation is available to you. So what I did is I literally just began that, hey, if I'll read the Word, man, I, I, it's going to change me, but it works. And so I want to encourage you, if you struggle with reading the Word of God, persevere, okay? Even when you don't feel like it's in, doing anything, I promise you it is. My first year teaching, I had a discipline. I was going to read one chapter of the Bible a day. You know, I went to first period planning, right? I had first period planning. I would read a chapter. Felt like I got nothing out of it. Anybody ever felt that way? You know, like you, you read it and you're like, brother, I might as well just roll back with this thing. I ain't got a clue. And so I did it that year. Didn't feel like I grew a ton. But I want to tell you, when, when God really jolted me and gave me opportunities to minister, that word was hidden in my heart and I didn't even know it. It was ready when willing. You know, God told, uh, Jesus told his disciples, he says, if you stand before folks, don't worry about what to say. I'll give you what to say. 
right? And when we hide that word in our heart, I promise you it's secure. I want to read a scripture, Isaiah 55, 11. So my word, so my word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, okay? But will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. What that means is the most important thing you could do every day is read your Bible. Because it says when that word goes forth, it's going to accomplish its purposes in us and then ultimately through us. I'm telling you, the word does the work. Any time spent in the Bible, whether you think it's good or not, whether you are motivated or not, it is time well spent. Amen? So hear this. I want you to take this with you. we got to move forward. because Man, i, I got to hammer some stuff here. Discipline yourself to read the Bible every day. We make appointments to get to work on time, make appointments to see God on time. We make appointments to get to the doctor, make appointments to get to the, the, the doctor of doctors. Make appointments to be with the God who, who loves you, and it will be, I promise, it will be a springboard for your life. So we discipline and train ourselves to read the Bible so that we can run the race. The second thing I want you to see about strict training for verse 25, number two, write this down. We must discipline ourselves to pray. We must discipline ourselves to pray, all right? And so prayer is one of those things that I feel like it's such a misconception and like we just don't know quite how to do it, right? We struggle with prayer sometimes, but I, I just want to give you a couple things. I want to illustrate something for you. Number one, we need to pray because Jesus needed to pray. Like, like Jesus, before he started his day, he went up on mountains. He's like, God, I need you. I can't accomplish what I'm about to do without time with you. And then a scripture I want you to see, John 16, 13. This should be on the screen. I want you to hear this. Um, it says, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is to come. This is talking about the Holy Spirit, right? And so one of the most important things you can do as you get ready to study the Bible and pray, Holy Spirit, would you help me? Because if, if I'm reading this right, it says when he comes, when he comes in our life, and let me say this, he comes when we give our lives to Christ, right? That your first step is to start to a relationship with God. We cannot dance around the cross. We fall down at the cross, ask Jesus to save our lives. Then the journey begins. But when the Spirit comes, when we get saved, he gives us the Spirit. It says he will guide you in the truth. He will show you what you need to know when you need to know it that you don't need to fear, but rather have faith that God is working in the unseen much more than you can see or feel in the scene. Amen? And hear this, Romans 8, 26 and 27. I'm going to read this scripture with you real quick. It says, In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Right? And, we who, and we who, he who searches the hearts knows the minds of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance to the will of God. Prayer is how we connect with God. That's how we know what he wants for us, what he wants to show us, even what he wants us to pray for. We pray because we want to know what God has for us, what he wants for us. Prayer is how we participate in God's work. Lord, show me what you want for me. God, I, I, I want to know. Lord, I want to know what you have for me. God, I'm hurting. Show me the promises I need. God, I, I want to reach people, but I don't know how. Show me. Lord, my brother's struggling. Give me a scripture to help him. Give me a scripture to help her. Jesus, I need you. Lord, if you don't show up, I need a miracle here. This person's sick. right? Now. God, I need you to show up. And let me tell you what God's been doing. Okay? We've been praying and God's been healing in this church. You hear me? And this is how we get connected to his work because much more than you just taking a shovel and digging a hole for somebody, I want to tell you, you can connect to the God eternal that can change the lives of people, heal them from sickness, and save them from death to life. That's the God you can pray to every single day. And he does it. And he does it. Hear this, James 5, 16. I want to back this up. Change my life, this verse right here. Therefore, confess your sins to one another. Walk in holiness, trust the Lord, watch your prayers become powerful. It says, pray for each other so that you may be healed. Right? For hear this, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. I want to tell you, when you set your heart on Christ, you walk away from sin, 
For me, it was the sin of sexual sin and looking at stuff I wasn't supposed to. And I knew if I, if I stayed with this stuff, God wouldn't use me, right? He can't use something he's not in. But I knew, I said, man, God, I, I, I want to follow you. And it says the, the man who's, who's the righteous, and it's not our own righteousness, but it's Christ's righteousness in us. It says the prayers of that person, they become powerful and they become effective. What that means is when you pray, God hears and he will work in you and through you and for you and around you. And you can begin to change the spiritual atmosphere everywhere you've been sent by him and accomplish the race he sent you out to accomplish. I mean, get connected to that guy because he's faithful. He's good. Amen? And so I want to tell you, man, talking about the mission. I'm a goer. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a get-up-and-go guy. All right? And so, so many times with the mission, that's the, the focus, just to get up and go, just to get up the go, to get up the go. But I, I want to tell you, as much as you have the go, have the time to spend and the time to spend with him. Mission and fuel for the mission starts with him. I've learned in my life, the power all lies in his ability, not ours. Hear that again. The power lies all in his ability, not ours. You know, we struggle. We have difficulties in our life, fears, sicknesses, finances. And a lot of times we go to God like he's a man holding a fire extinguisher, right? That we go to God like he's the man that can put out the fires in our life. But I want to tell you, if, if, you would, if we would have a more, um, what's the word, proactive view of God, because that's a reactive way. We live life how we want to, and then we turn to God to put out the fires we've made in our life, right? But a proactive view of God is this. I want you to see a creator who is infinite in power and provision. If you'll walk with him on the front end, he'll give you power in the step and the step in the day-to-day -day of your life. His power and provision is available for those that would, would hide in the shelter of his wings. Psalm 91, take this down with you. If you're scared about all the stuff going on in this world, Psalm 91. It says those that, that dwell with him, that dwell in his shelter, they're blessed and he goes with them. Man, you get tucked away with God, his presence and power and provision are walking with you. And guess what? Even better, in front of you. That God prepares a path for us, as we're about to see, to obey. God does the heavy lifting. We just simply have to obey. Hear that again. God does the heavy lifting. You know, Martin Luther said it like this, because we are a go-get-it kind of people, right? We're overwhelmed by the to-do. A lot of times church gets thrown at the back, right? When we disconnect from the world, the church is usually the last thing to get connected sometimes. Thankfully, in our church, man, I, 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 there's so many faithful that are seeking the Lord, man, and God's working in your life. Hear what Martin Luther said. He said, I have so much to do today, I'm going to need to spend three hours in prayer to get it all done. <laughs> he said, I have so much to do today, I, I'm going to need to spend three hours in prayer. What if we saw God as infinite in provision? Okay? Infinite in provision. Because see, just like I talked about, I started seeking a holy life and I started praying for things and believing them, okay? I started praying for things and believing them. So what I want to encourage you, this is the application. Discipline yourself to pray every day and to cultivate a life of prayer. There's not much that grows our faith more than seeing answered prayer. I'm telling you, if you want to get, you want to get fired up for the Lord, pray and believe it and watch God answer it, Right? Not for convertibles, but for souls. Francis Chan said this. He said, if God answered every one of our prayers this week, how many people would be added to the kingdom? Francis Chan said, if, if God answered every one of our prayers this week, how many more people would be added to the kingdom? Right? I want to tell you, I've watched God do it for years, and he'll continue to do it. And this is the deal. You have different circles than I have, but I'm trusting God to, to change my circles through his power, and through his spirit, through the power of prayer. He can do the same with you, all right? Third thing, take this with you. So we've got the discipline to read, right? That the, 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 the motivation comes and goes, but discipline stays. The discipline to read, the discipline to pray. Write this down, number three. We must discipline ourselves to obey. Now, this is where things are about to get powerful. This is where things are about to get next level. 
Right? I, I want you to flourish in your race with Christ. I want you to be effective in making disciples. I want you to be a, effective that, that you can say, man, I ran the race, and man, I, I, I did it. So here, this, this is where things are about to get powerful. Read Acts 18, 9, and 10. I'm going to be on the screen. We're not going to stay here long. It says, one night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. He says, do not be afraid, but to keep on speaking. Do not be silent, okay? For I am with you, and no one is going to attack you and harm you, because I have many people in this city, okay? Now, Paul is talking about a vision here. God may not speak to you in a vision, but this is what I want to tell you. The more time you spend with God, the more you're going to become accustomed to his voice. Hear that again. The more time you spend with God, the more you're going to begin to, to hear and know his voice, right? And it's the spirit that gives us the direction of where to go and what to do, what to do next, right? The word and the spirit do the work. We must be connected. We are connected through what? Prayer and study of the word, right? That we seek the Lord and he will begin to impress us with our next steps, who the people are, what we should do next. And I want to tell you, when you begin to be nudged to step, number one, hear this, it's going to be uncomfortable, but you're going to step, God's going to work, and your faith will be strengthened. That that voice will take you to places that may not be comfortable, but I'm telling you, when you take the step, God will go with you and it will be worth it. Because the opposite of the end is this. You know, I know folks that have never missed a Sunday school, did it 40 years, never made a disciple. Never took the step to, to use anything. Spiritual ticks. You know, Carly and I are having a conversation about this. The end game is not for you to become a good moral person that you feel better about yourself. Okay? The end game is as you do become holy, you become holy and effective in this world. That our heart breaks for the things that breaks the heart of our Savior, Jesus. Hear this in Ephesians 2.10. I want you to hear this. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Okay? Obedience allows us to accomplish God's work in the world. Okay? It says we, we, we're not saved or we're not God's handiwork to just chill out. It says, but no, we're his handiwork to do good works, which are prepared in advance. Get into his word, get into prayer, get into the, uh, his Holy Spirit's leadership, and there are mighty things in the name of Jesus already on your path. You grab your Bible, you step into them, and watch God use you for an incredible purpose. They're there. You don't have to cultivate them. God's got them. And remember, the strength is not in your ability. The strength is in his ability. You don't have to do the heavy lifting. God will do the heavy lifting. All we have to do is simply say, listen, God, I'm listening and I obey. Say yes to what he's telling you to do. We are trained by his word for work. We're trained by his word for work. Brother and sister, I want to tell you, you're reading the Bible to be equipped for his mission. Okay? God has work for you to do in the world. Even the, the one that's here, you're like, man, I'm disqualified. No way God could use me. God has work for you to do. Man, he, he thrives in using people that do not feel able because what it does, it brags on him because he is able. You're equipped. So how do we apply this? God has a plan. Okay? If, I could, if I could illustrate it. God created the heavens and the earth and the garden. He created us to be in relationship with him, to know him, right? There's a problem in here. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. God's perfect, we're not. Therefore, we've been disconnected, okay? There's God, here's us. Through a relationship with Jesus, we become reconciled or reconnected with our God. That means that we have eternal security because of what he did for us on the cross. He covered all the sin that separated us from God, right? So now, when we pray, we can have direct access and fellowship to God. Now, here's the thing. Over here, we've got the world that we live in. You hear me? And so, as we become connected to God, right, His purpose is to send us into the world to make disciples of the nations so that His glory would be covering the earth and the earth would be a reflection of Him. Like, like we really, how many of you love superhero stories? 
We literally have a mission to save the world. And God puts that mission in our heart at salvation, and he all gives us a part to play. Okay? Whether we're Iron Man or Ant Man. You hear me? No Marvel fans. All right. Got it. Note to sell. But you all, we all have a heart to play. Some of you will be intercessory prayer. Some of you will be uh, hosting a connect group. Some of you will be going on mission, going on foreign missions. But we all, church, everybody listening online in the building, we all have a part to play. And God has equipped you, not because of anything you've done, because of everything he's done in you, which is the Holy Spirit he's deposited. And so for the sake of the gospel, that people need to hear it, we go. We want to know the one who saved us. Jesus is why we're here. We want to obey the one that saved us. Jesus is why we obey. We want others to know the one who saved us. Jesus is why we will go and tell. Right? And so today, as we get ready to close, maybe today, that gospel message, you've heard it and you say, Buck, I'm, I'm not connected to God in any way. My life is sin. I have no desire to read the Bible. I have no desire to pray. I'm here because, man, I, I need something. I want to tell you what you don't need is a better version of yourself. You need Christ. And so he loves you. There's nothing you could do to outrun his grace. Uh, you may feel like, man, God's here. I've been running straight into the dirt. I've run my life into the dirt. God's grace is sufficient to save people in the darkest of places. I've seen them soften the hardest of hearts. And so today, if that's you, we're about to give an invitation as we get ready to worship. And if that's you, I want to encourage you to respond. All right? And for the rest of us, I pray that God would spoke to your heart, that we discipline ourselves this week to read his word, to pray and be connected with the Holy Spirit, and to obey what he has. Because some of you right now, the Holy Spirit's working on your heart, and you know obedience is to give your life to Christ, be baptized next weekend, and to join us as we encourage one another and strengthen each other to be used by the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we, we love you. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for your blessings and your grace, Lord. God, I just pray right now for the heart that's wrestling. Holy Spirit, I know you're in this place. I pray for the heart that's wrestling with the magnitude of the gospel that a Savior could come and save someone like them. But Lord, I, I know you're, you're good to do that. You're, you're sufficient to save. And so Lord, I just want to give that invitation and I just want to speak to you. If there's anyone here that you know, but man, today is the day I, I need a relationship with Jesus and I want to respond to this invitation. If that's you, would you just lift your hand? I'm going to give everyone a second right here. Amen. Amen. Is there anyone else? I'll give you guys just a moment. Amen. Let's continue to pray. Father, we love you. God, thank you for your saving work that's happening in this place right now. God, I pray that you would just continue to work and God, have your way. God, as we get ready to celebrate in song and worship, God, I just pray you would move and work. Have your way, God. We love you. God, equip us. Lord, there's nothing I could say to motivate us any more or any less. God, we need you to speak to us as we worship. Let our hearts be open, not to be closed to what you're doing. Lord, let us just celebrate what you've done. God, what you did on the cross for us. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the redemption we have in him. Lord, we just love you. God, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you guys celebrate? We had someone respond and said yes to Jesus. That's awesome. As always, I love you guys more than you could ever know. Stand and sing. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song. Of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. 
You have no longer listening to fear. I am a child of God. Myself, my mother's room. From my mother's room, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again to a family. And blood flows through my veins. Cause I'm no longer. Child of God, yeah, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Yes, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. ask that as we lift as we leave this place God that you would bless us you would go before us 
and that you would bring us back safely next week so that we can worship and exalt you again. We pray for it in your strong and holy name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Be blessed.